Welcome to Discovering. I'm on Keweenaw Bay for some fishing and a look at a new innovation that comes from right here in the UP. We have an application that you can load up onto your phone or your tablet. And essentially that's gonna turn a $150 tablet like this, that's just a Wi-Fi tablet, something just about everyone has at home, into a real high-end chart plotter and fish finder that you can use on your boat. That's all tonight, so sit back and put your feet up. It's Monday night and time for discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan There's no shortage of creativity and ingenuity in the UP. And with all of the fishing opportunities that surround us, it's no wonder that somebody would come along with a product destined to revolutionize their segment of the fishing market. I met up with Travis White of the Keweenaw Charter Fishing Company, also co-founder and CEO of ProNav Marine. We spent some time on Keweenaw Bay talking about their product and fishing. So basically there's some rock cribs that go right out here from the end of this pier. There used to be a dock in here. And uh, I guess a lot of these splake in Keweenaw Bay tend to kind of follow along the structure relatively shallow. We're only in about nine feet of water here. So we're kind of looking for some of this riprap in here. Otherwise it's a pretty sandy bottom. So there's not a whole lot that holds fish uh, in one place otherwise. But then again, you know, the water temperature is the other thing that really will uh, get these fish concentrated in the relatively small areas here. So if we can find those pockets of water like at the river mouth here, that are one or two degrees warmer than everything else, that's what those fish are gonna be doing in here, is kinda hanging out in that warm water, uh, feeding, you know, looking for bait. This time of year, the smelt are just about to run here, so that's kind of another factor. You know, those fish are kind of naturally drawn into the river mouse too, just from the, the bait standpoint, where you've got a lot of, you know, a lot of schools of bait that are just outside of these mouths off the drop-offs, and uh, of course, at night, they kinda move up in shallow here. So this time of year, all of these cohos and browns and little splake, they're just uh, stuffed with smelt, you know, a mature smelt that are coming in right now. That's a fish. Doesn't feel like a trout though. I'm not sure what we got. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh yeah, not a bad one. Right on the edge of this brown murky water and this kind of bluish green water here coming out of the river mouth. Nice. Looks like a splake. Have to go so far north to get a splake anyways. There. It's a nice uh, Keweenaw Bay splake. See those pretty fins on it. So of course this is our hybrid between a brook trout and a lake trout. You can see the coloration is pretty similar to a, a laker. This time of year, especially in the spring, they're kind of muted, um, but you can see the spotting just like a, a brook trout would have. And of course, in the fall time, these fish will actually show more tendencies of the brook trout as far as coloration. So we switched over to a suspending husky jerk here, kind of a brown trout pattern. We'll let this guy get on his way. Basically the ProNav Angler 
what you're getting, this is a GPS piece here. So this clamp basically goes right onto your trolling motor shaft. You got a thumb screw here and you just lock that down in place on the motor. So basically we align this with the trolling motor. It doesn't have to be exact and we have a calibration routine so any air in here gets swept out. And essentially this GPS plugs right in here, a quick disconnect, into an adapter piece that goes right into your trolling motor. So essentially this plug here matches the plug on your trolling motor foot pedal. Then this plug matches the uh, foot pedal plug that comes out of the trolling motor. So what this lets you do is plug right into the motor and keep your handheld you know, or your foot pedal controls in place. Then lastly, the smaller cable here basically runs down to your 12 volt or 24 volt batteries. So this just plugs in just like your trolling motor does on the same battery. So it's very simple. You know, I can install this adapter piece by plugging it to the motor and I can attach this GPS piece here in less than five minutes. And then basically what you do is you get your smartphone or tablet, you get a free app on here. So this app is gonna allow you to control the trolling motor and you've got all your manual remote control features as well as the anchoring, routes, and the heading lock GPS functions that we talked about earlier. So one of the cool things we can do with the ProNav system is use our tablet to actually lay out a route. And you could do this on a phone as well, but I like this big screen here. Basically, I can come in and just press on the map. So I'm looking at a satellite image right now, and that's kind of showing the, uh, the harbor here where we're fishing. And I can actually zoom in on the map, and if I want to run a route right along the break wall over here, I can come in and actually plot out these points just by clicking and holding on the screen. You know, if you want to change one where it's at, if you don't like it, I can grab onto it and I can drag it to a new location just like that. So I grab it onto that, drag it to a new location. Basically, I can come in here and set a, a speed that I want to go. So I've got a slider here, zero to 100. That's going to set your motor thrust. And then also I can actually set a specific mile per hour speed. So if I wanted to have that motor maintain me at, you know, let's say 0.8 miles per hour, I hit send, and now that motor is gonna do all the adjusting of the propeller to keep us going 0.8 miles per hour from one point to the next. So what that lets me do is spend all my time casting, working this brake wall, and I don't actually have to worry about adjusting that motor manually at all. So one of the nice things here is if you create these routes, so this is something you could actually do at home, you can save them. So I'm gonna hit the save icon here and give it a, a name. So we'll call this the break wall. And basically when I come out here, anytime I come out, I can rerun this route. So I hit save. And another cool thing about this is if I wanna pull up a saved route, you know, it's gonna show me all these different routes I've created, sorted in proximity to where my boat's at. You can plan these routes out ahead of time, you know, take your iPad home or your phone and you can be sitting on your couch the night before your fishing trip and you can plot out all these routes. So when you get to the lake, if you know where you want to fish, you're not going to be spending or wasting any of your time on the water doing this part. You literally pull up your route from that saved uh, archive of, of routes and you just hit go and it's going to take you there. And now I can actually flip the direction that I trolled on that route. So I could set uh, this point here as my starting point and now if I wanted to come back to where we started, I just hit the flip arrows button. And now you can see the checkered flag at the end here. So I'm gonna hit go, and it's gonna take us down to the green point, and then it'll run us back, you know, turn us around and run us back along the break wall. Here's kind of a sneak peek of what the Navionics maps would look like. I've got all these different contour lines in here. They're one foot contours. And I've got it shaded so that the, uh, the white and blue transition is 15 feet. And if I wanted to keep my photo boat along this 15 foot transition here. I'm just going to come in uh, basically along this contour line and create these points. So you can see how easy that is to do. You know, basically it's just clicking. You hold on there for a second and it's going to drop a new point in. If you go through an area and you're on a route and you catch a couple of fish, it's really nice to be able to bring yourself right back through that route. Whether you just turn around and run that same route in the opposite direction or say you pull your motors up, your lines in, and you run back down, you can run it again. You know? So if you're running with the wind, for example, you can just get on that same trajectory over and over. And then if you want to vary it up a little bit, like I showed you, you can edit that route and create a couple variations of it so you're not covering the exact same structure twice. And we're coming right up onto that first point in the route. So now you can see the motor is basically going to turn around. You know, and we, we did exactly what we should. We came straight into the point uh, going downwind and we asked it to turn 180 degrees. But as you can see, it's gonna do that for us one way or another. 
and now it's going to basically take us up to those next couple points in the route. You know, so even in a stiff breeze like we got today, you know, this system is going to make all those little adjustments, you know, continuously to keep your boat tracking on this course. So you've got a lot of different options here. And basically all this is doing is this is designed to let you spend your time fishing hands-free so you're not constantly controlling the boat with either a remote control or a foot pedal. So what we're doing here is basically just moving around now. We're gonna try a couple of these crick mouths and look for some warmer water. Uh, we just got out here a little ways, and now it's 38 degree water temp. So the rest of the lake is 38 degrees, and these fish are gonna be looking for something around 40, you know, or 40 plus this time of year. Um, so right now, you know, with this east wind, a lot of this bay is kind of churned up, but if we can kind of get tucked into some of the structure and riprap around the edges here, we might actually find some of that warmer water that we're looking for. And I really can't emphasize how important that one or two degree temperature change is this time of year to actually finding those fish really concentrated. You know, you can control this entire bay and there's fish all throughout here, but it's really gonna be hunting for a needle in a haystack versus, you know, coming in here where you've got the best chance of those fish being, you know, in a, in a larger school and concentration. So that's really what we're doing. We're watching the graph. You know, we're kind of looking for a spike in temp. We're looking for dirty water coming out of these cricks. You know, a lot of times, maybe not today with the cloud cover, but a lot of times the sun uh, will really warm that darker water up a lot more so than the, uh, the clear water around it. So if we can find any of these areas where, where you've got some stained water, you've got some sunlight, you know, that's gonna be absolutely key. Little guy here. Feisty little guy. Beautiful little coho. Basically what we're using is a small swim bait. So we've got a stinger hook rigged up on here, which is basically how that fish got hooked. And that's kind of a key to, to hooking some of these smaller fish, is having a, a hook right back where they're gonna be nipping at the bait. Beautiful spring coho, just a little guy. We're gonna let him go. Now see what's happening, you know, we've got this northeast wind We've got the river flowing out here, and this northeast wind is preventing any of this warm water from entering the lake into the bay here. You know, our best chance of finding some warm water is literally right up against this uh, iron break wall here, and all that warm water is just kind of bunched up against it. So it's 46.7 degrees, seven or eight degrees warmer than 100 yards that way. So these fish are pretty in tune to that, and if we can get in tune to that, we might have a little bit of luck. So about every cast, something's following it. You know, these fish are in a real negative mood right now. <laughs> We're having them basically following right to the boat. You know, they're literally nudging the bait. And I've seen that happen three times now in the last five minutes. And they just won't, uh, they won't commit. They won't quite get to uh, open their mouths here. I'm gonna hit the anchor here on ProNav and see if we can't just stay put. Our ProNav system is taking that electric motor and it is doing all the steering and all the adjustment to the thrust of that motor to basically hold us in one spot. I think we got a coho here. Yahoo! Well, I'm not gonna claim to know anything, but every once in a while we get lucky switching baits and the last couple of fish have come onto this uh, kind of a brown trout pattern it's just a hussy jerk you know we throw all sorts of different colors and this one just happened to pop out so you know we were getting hits on the other stuff but uh, nothing was committing so just kind of kept cycling through a few different things and this has increased our luck a little bit but it could just be time of day or something else going on too but uh, look at that we got a got a beautiful beautiful spring coho here and this is really kind of your average fish right here um, you know about 16 to 18 inches this time of year, a big one's probably going to be no more than 20, you know, and then these fish are literally packing on the feed right now, you know, throughout the spring season, and as summer rolls around, they're really going to start fattening up, you know, they're going to spawn this fall, so this is a, you know, probably about a, I guess they'd be about a two and a half year old fish, and this fall, they're going to be spawning already, so, you know, in the fall time, this fish will probably be about 24 or 25 inches, and, uh, you know, maybe four to six pounds, you know, six would be a big one, so. Beautiful fish, you know, these coho on Lake Superior are just some of the 
the chrome bullets, I guess. And uh, they're fun to catch. When you get into them, you can get quite a few. They're absolutely excellent table fare. And it's kind of cool because these are all wild fish here in Lake Superior. So they're kind of remnant of the stocking that was done, you know, in past decades. And they've kind of hung on throughout that time and, you know, beautiful fish. Throw them right in the live well here. Get a little water running. That's a perfect eater. So these fish are, you know, by far my favorite. When it comes to eating fish out here, people always ask, you know, what is the best fish to eat? And I would always say coho, you know, above all. The splake are pretty good too. Uh, this time of year, you know, these brown trout and splake are gonna be really within feet of the shoreline. And they kind of are doing a couple things there. They're hanging out in that warm water we've been talking about. They're also looking for, uh, you know, small bait fish and even, you know, even terrestrials that are kind of getting washed in off the, the rocks. You know, you really can't fish too close to shore this time of year. In fact, you'll hear a lot of people talking, you know, when they're, especially for brown trout, about running their pointer boards literally, you know, almost out of the beach. And that's because these brown trout are just not shy at all about being, you know, up in shallow. That's where they do most of their feeding. This might be a little rainbow here. Maybe a steelhead. Oh yeah, this is a bigger fish. You know, that is a cool thing about fishing this time of year in the warm water areas, is that you just don't know what you're gonna catch. You know, one minute you're catching a, you know, a 12 or 14 inch splake. Then you're, you're hitting coho. Then all of a sudden a steelhead comes, comes to play. <laughs> and these fish really have a mind of their own, you know, in this cold water this time of year, it's probably a post-spawn fish by now. When these fish do come back out of the river, they are just hungry and scrappy. You know, they'll hit just about anything. They lose a lot during spawning and they're really trying to get themselves back into shape for summer. Oh gosh, I was wrong. This is a really nice splake. This is about as big as a splake will get down here. All right. Just strictly based on the size of the fish, I saw that and said, that's gotta be a steelhead. We're in the river mouth here. I saw some color on the fins. We finally get it up to the boat and in the net here. And we've got just a gorgeous splake. Uh, this is a mature fish. You know, this is probably a three or four year old splake here. It's getting probably close to 20 inches or better. So this is really where they kind of show some characteristics of their brook trout genetics is with these beautiful, brightly colored fin tips. They're kind of a man-made fish, essentially. The DNR stocks these to create a fishery that's close to shore where people can come and catch them. And that's, they stick around a lot of shallow water throughout the year, so you can, you know, you can always access them even if you've just got a real small boat. Spinning rod, a husky jerk, you know, it's pretty simple. These flake are good eating fish, but I'm gonna let this one go given that he's getting up there in size a bit and looks like he's in pretty good shape. So we'll let him live another day. Be a great meal for someone else. Well, four years ago, we were out fishing, of course, and uh, it just so happened that uh, you know, I'm an engineer by training, and uh, I was with another friend here who's an engineer. And of course, uh, engineering minds are always thinking, you know, just like uh, everybody else up here in the UP, you know, thinking of ways to solve problems. And, uh, you know, our problem that day was that we had a heck of a win, and the boat was, you know, the boat was just really hard to keep going in a straight line. And I think anybody that's ever fished the big lake can definitely relate to this. You know, we're trolling along, we've got six lines out, we hook a fish. We've got one guy with a net, one guy with a fish, you know, the boat's doing its own thing. Well, by the time we got that fish into the net, the boat had spun a full circle, we got all of our lines wrapped up, and, you know, we said, geez, there's got to be a better way to keep that boat going straight. And, uh, you know, that, that problem right there kind of led to, well, hey, why couldn't we build a, some sort of affordable autopilot that anybody can put onto their boat? You know, so basically if you've got an electric trolling motor on your boat, we'll put an autopilot on there that can keep that motor in the water going while you're doing all the other things like fighting fish, you know, netting fish, and keep your boat right where you want it instead of you having to do so, you know, by using a foot pedal or touching the steering wheel or that sort of thing. As smartphones are sort of starting to creep in more and more into everybody's lives uh, day to day, so our thought process was, why couldn't you make an autopilot that uses this very powerful little computer, you know, your smartphone or your tablet, to do all the navigation that a very expensive autopilot system would do, um, where these expensive systems are using a, a very high-end chart plotter that's gonna cost at least $1,000, if not more, to get, a, you know, to get the basic mapping functionality. So, you know, our thought process was let's eliminate that piece of equipment, give people a GPS they can just plug right into their motor, and hopefully that would solve their problem. It would give them the ability to stay put when they're out fishing. 
we had an opportunity to get started with the Michigan Tech Smart Zone, the MTech Smart Zone here in Houghton, Michigan. And basically what that is is a business incubator where inventors like us come forward with ideas. So we got to go through a six week program with them as the very first step. And by the time we got done with that, we actually had a business plan formulated around designing this autopilot system. And by the time we were done with that program, we knew exactly who our customers were gonna be. You know, we narrowed it down to the types of fishermen, the size of boats, and we said, geez, you know, there's about a half million, you know, fishermen out there with these little electric trolling motors that could readily benefit from a product like what we'd envisioned. And from there, you know, three years ago, we've really grown our team as our product has matured from a, a first prototype, which was literally built into a Tupperware container that we duct taped onto the trolling motor. And uh, the second iteration of that was, you know, a small plastic enclosure with some cables coming out of it. And now we've got a product that's a very finished product. You know, it's got nice uh, clamping pieces so you can put it on your trolling motor. You know, we've got nice molded plugs with, you know, O-ring seals to keep everything uh, waterproof. It's fully sealed with epoxy, so it's shockproof. So now we've got a product that, you know, you can put on the shelf in retail, and, and we're just confident when someone buys it, we're not gonna have issues with it, you know, falling apart and that sort of thing. So it's been a several year process of fine tuning our product, getting all the functions built into it in the software and the programming, and basically getting it into the volume of manufacturing where we're at today, you know, so that we can sell this product and market it. Being located here in Houghton, you know, we're right in a hotbed of very uh, talented people, very smart engineers. And, you know, we can walk down the street from our office, literally, and uh, we can go recruit at Michigan Tech and, and find some very talented uh, software programmers, electrical engineers, you know, and just uh, different skill sets that we wouldn't have access to, you know, potentially in another way. So, you know, we're fortunate to be here in the UP. We're fortunate to have the resources we do. And we honestly feel that we'll be able to keep our business right up here in Houghton, Michigan, uh, long term, you know, as we grow the company. And hopefully down the road, we have other products besides just this one. Well, that's it for tonight. If you'd like to keep tabs on what's coming up on Discovering or see where we've been, go to 906outdoors.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering. Discovering.